Hey everyone and welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted this white fur using acrylic paints. I have done a tutorial before on white wiry fur and I'll link to that so that you can go and have a look at that as well if you want to. I'll just give you a brief look at the actual finished painting there and I did airbrush this out so that I could do a study underneath but obviously I'm just going to show you how I did the fur itself before I airbrushed it out because that airbrushing and everything is not really relevant here it's just learning how to do white fur. So first comes this blocking in layer and all I'm doing is just laying down some underpainting to build up on and I'm just using a larger round brush so that I can get it down onto paper a little bit faster and obviously hold more paint on it as well and I'm just following direction of air growth you always have to make sure that you pay attention to that because that's one big mistake that I see a lot of beginners making is that they're just not following the direction that the air is actually growing and laying in so you need to pay attention to that and also notice that it's a little bit murky I'm not adding any actual whites even though this is white fur it's it's quite dark because this is going to be underpainting so you don't want to put any like lights, you know the highlights, the lightest hairs. You don't want to do any of that until right to end. So it's all quite dark at minute and a little bit murky. So now I'm just building up on that because the first layer were a little bit like translucent. Just needs building up on. And basically just look at the darker areas on the actual reference photo. The, the shadows between your clumps and, and what have you. And them's the colours and the, the shades that you need to be using at this stage because this is basically going to be representing all the darker areas below the, the lighter hair on top. So you're going to be gradually working up in tone. So just look at the, the darkest areas and use them kinds of colours and shades. You can see I'm using some ochres and things like that. So I've, I'm using white and black and some ochre and what have you in this. And I'm just going to work on trying to get the general shapes of clumps of air I'm not trying to get individual airs at this point so just look at the way that the, the fur clumps and just try and get them clumps in place it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage I'm just getting the paint on so that I can build up a base for gradually refining it as I go along and you can see that I'm still building it up just keep building it up until it's the way that I want it to be and I'm still using this same round brush I'm going to put all my supplies in description so you can go and have a look at exactly what it is that I'm using I found that people were asking me a lot about what brushes and what have you I were using so I thought it'd be an easy thing to do to start linking to the Amazon and just let people go and have a look themselves at what it is that I'm using in my videos so here I've decided I needed to go back darker again a little bit, you know, for the areas that are quite shadowed, you know, between clumps and what have you. So I'm just coming back in with some darker ochre and what have you and just putting it in them areas that you can see, you know, the bottoms of the clumps where light can't get in. So it just looks a bit darker and in them gaps and that kind of thing. And then I just come back in with lighter tones again and work on them clumps and the edges of them clumps to overlap the edges of them darker areas so it, it don't look odd. So now I've gone down in brush size using a smaller round brush. Don't really matter exact size, just use what's comfortable for you. And I'm just adding some more refined shadows in and I'm using yellow ochre, burnt umber, black and white and pretty sure that's the colours that I were using for this. That's what colours I'd use to mix it anyway if I were going to do it again. <laughs> and I'm mostly concentrating underneath this main clump just underneath his chin and just getting the shadows in there and you'll notice I'm going to be extending that shadow onto the hair that's coming out onto the the hair that's further down his chest underneath that clump and notice the difference in direction that the air grows the air on that clump just under his chin is coming down and a little bit to right and then the air just underneath it is going off to the left so you've got to just bear in mind these differences in direction and I think these can make it quite challenging to paint air like this when it's not all going in the same direction and you have fur that's going in one direction overlapping fur that's going in another direction I find that's quite challenging to get correct so when I'm painting the shadows that go under these other clumps I don't mind 
just going over the bottom parts of them clumps a little bit just to get them shadows in because I'm going to come back later and do that that clump at top and then overlap it over that shadow and that's the good thing about acrylics is that you can so easily just layer them like that so even if you have to paint over some just to get some you know detailing underneath where you've you've got like bits of air coming down and just little gaps between them and you, you want to get some air in that's going in a different direction you can just go over it I mean you might not paint that other air in at all that's over top at first and just do what's underneath and then do what's on top afterwards but the reason I do it this way is because I just like to get an idea of where the the, the top clump so to speak is going to be so I don't mind just painting over the the bottom parts of that clump where the airs are sticking over the next clump I don't mind painting over that a little bit because it still gives me an idea of where everything's going to be and then I can just paint back over the top of it afterwards and still come to the same result so at this point I'm just tidying everything up ready for the final detail layer I'm using a smaller round brush now so that I can get smaller strokes because basically all I'm doing is just building up layers. You'll see that acrylic does darken a little bit as it dries so when I'm first putting it on it looks brighter and then it gets a little bit darker as it dries. So I'm still not using bright whites or anything like that at this stage, it's, it's all just a little bit darker. But I am adding some extra texture just by adding some lighter clumps of airs within the present clumps and then leaving the area just under it a little bit darker so it just looks like a new clump and this is where you're just creating the general look of the the whole area the fur on that whole area just getting the clumps in place and the values correct and just starting to add in a little bit of texture we aren't going into too much detail I tend to find that white fur in general takes a lot more layering than say like black fur which don't take anywhere near the amount of layering that white fur does. This building up on layers seems to be the most time consuming part of it, getting it to just generally look right before you're adding them final highlights. Some people might consider it finished at this stage and if you would consider it finished then that's up to you. Depends on how tightly detailed you want your work or whether you want it a little bit more loose. Not everybody wants it as detailed as this. I've just always been a fan of detail and creating it and that's why I do realism. I still think there's a lot to be learned from either technique for the other techniques. So for example, producing looser paintings, there's techniques that you can still use to create more realistic paintings and then the processes in creating realistic paintings there's techniques that you can use to produce a looser painting. So I think I'm finally finishing up on this layer now I've got it generally looking the way that I want to and this is basically how it'll look at this stage minus the final highlights. So here you'll notice that I've switched brushes, I've gone from round brush to a rigger brush now so that I can do my final details. I'm now switching to my Liquitex white paint as well so because it seems to be a bit brighter and I might add a little bit of yellow ochre to it but only a tiny little bit just to warm it up slightly but I want to keep it as bright as possible so that it stands out against the slightly darker paint that's underneath it. You might notice that the bristles on the rigger brush have been flattened. I always flatten them in the paint so that I can do the hair strokes using one corner which creates a, a more fine line than trying to just use the whole lot in a point. I show the way that I do this in me painting a pug. I think it's the third stage uh, when I'm doing the fine details and I show you what I do to make it look like this. I'll link to that uh, so that you can go and have a look at that if you want to have a look at it. But basically I just put the bristles in the paint, just wiggle them around a little bit and flatten them so that it's like just flattened. And then I use each corner to do your fine hairs instead of just using the whole thing in a point, so to speak. I think one of the main things you have to remember when doing this final layer is not to cover up everything underneath. The only reason these highlights stand out is because you can see everything underneath in between. So you don't want to be making these strokes too concentrated so to speak and covering up everything underneath otherwise you've just undone all your hard work that you did up to this point. And when you get sort of like a clump of air you might 
concentrate more of the strokes on the centre at clump and not so much on the edges and then it gives that clump a more rounded look which is how it would be in real life it won't generally just be flat and all at the same level all the way across it it would generally be sort of like a rounded shape on its on its edge so to speak just trying to be a little bit more careful under chin here so I don't go over at chin too much but it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of slight smudging of at chin because I do come back to chin afterwards and finish that off I never finish the chin off and any, any areas that sort of protrude over the chest and neck until I've done the chest and neck and then I just come back to them so that I can do any little whiskers and longer hairs and things like that which overlap and are in front of that chest hair. So it don't matter if you smudge over it a little bit because you can just cover it up again afterwards. Another thing you might have noticed is that when I'm doing these strokes I tend to start from the base of hair and work out towards the tip but there's some areas where I do it all the way around and it's not through choice, it's because of my very limited space where I'm painting. So airs that are on the left side of painting and are like pointing out towards left, I'm often forced to do them from the tip to the base and it's not my preferred way to do it, it's, it's just because of mechanics and lack of space and I can't position myself in a way that I'd be able to do it the other way because with the painting being taped to a, a drawing board and all that and, and me not being able to get round to that side of it it just makes it a little bit more awkward but yeah I do prefer painting from the base to the tip it just works better that way Another little tip is to make sure you don't keep all the fur too uniform and too tidy you're always going to get little stray flyaway strands that's just doing random things and putting a few of these in here and there it just makes it look a lot more realistic and just helps to add that final touch you can see a few going on here in, in various places every time you see somebody rendering realistic hair they'll tend to add these little flyaway strands in whether it's on people portraits or animals it just makes it look a lot better so I'm just adding some final touches to this now and then I'll be able to call it done I hope that you've found this tutorial helpful because I know that white fur can be a bit of a challenge. So if you've enjoyed this video then please consider giving it a like and also if you're not subscribed then maybe do that so you can keep up with my content and also you can support my channel via super thanks as well. I will be posting up a full time lapse of this painting at some point, there's a few others to go first. So until then I'll bid you a farewell and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!